Today's episode is a huge one. I encourage you to wear a diaper because you might shit your pants. Welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is Wordalo Mike, <laughs> and this is the inside of my mind. As always, each week sees me adopt a different name. Generally, it follows the RM formula. For example, Really O Mad, I did one week because my name is Radio Mike. This week, I have gone the other way and just gone something O Mike, like Radio Mike. So, Wordalo Mike this week. Feel free to always send in a submission for a name you'd like me to use at the start. It's a different name every week, as I just said. And I kind of like to think of it sort of like how in The Simpsons, they have all their kind of opening credits gags, which I think always were really fun. Like there's the chalkboard gag with Bart. There's the couch gag. I think Lisa's saxophone solo changes from time to time. Not every yet, but from time to time that changes. I like that. I think that's fun. So that's why there's a little thing like that in this podcast, guys. Wordle Mike, of course, because of the word game sensation, Wordle. Anyway, welcome to the show, 20th Century Boy, the conversations you wish you were having, the conversations you want to be having. My name's Radio Mike, young writer and producer from Melbourne, Australia, trying trying to make his way through life. Sometimes it's easier than other times. At the moment, it's all right. I'm just really, really tired. Um... And as always, as I said, this podcast contains the conversations you wish you were having, the sometimes nerdy and sometimes hilarious conversations you wish you were having with your friends, but let's face it, you're not, because your friends aren't as funny as me. And that's why you listen to this podcast every week, 20th Century Boy, the conversations you want to be having. Been a really big week. Start off, as always, by imploring you to sign up to our Patreon, patreon.com slash radio mike. As little as a dollar a month, you get access to some bonus podcasts and etc. Me and Pat, the producer of this show, who does get paid out of the Patreon money. So if you like the content this show puts out, please, a dollar a month, $12 a year, which is about three coffees a year. If you would go and get coffee with me or buy me a coffee three times a year, then please sign up to patreon.com slash radio mic and support the show. Thank you to new Patreon subscriber, Radio Luke jumped on this week. Really appreciate it. Thank you for jumping on board. It's good to have you there. Um, I also said, uh, actually, so me and Pat are going to be revamping the Patreon. I have a couple ideas. I will finalize this at the end of the week because at the end of this week, I finish up on the hundred, which I'll talk a little bit more about soon. And uh, um, we're going to revamp the Patreon. I appreciate and uh, apologize that the Patreon, since I've been working full time, hasn't been serviced as much as it should. There's been a bit of drop off, which is also a huge shame. I really would like to endear anyone who listens to this podcast, 20th Century Boy, or any of my stuff across all my socials. A dollar a month or $12 a year goes a huge long way. It actually goes such a long way. And um, there will be stuff coming out soon that I will tease next week. But please consider signing up if you like my stuff. It means a lot. The Instagram. The podcast Instagram launched last week. There is exclusive content and stories and questions going up there. Pat and I are co-managing that account. It's at TCB pod on Instagram. Follow it. I think we got a good 80 followers in the first week. Thank you so much for jumping on board, everyone. Um, lots of different posts and stuff that won't go up on the Radio Mike Instagram. So, so good to get on board. I also will follow you back on the account. Um, so if you want an extra follower, I will follow every follower back. And uh, as well as that, uh, last week I said the 45th Patreon, because we were up to 44, the 45th Patreon who signs up to the $4.50 tier or above will get a free Can I Borrow a Feeling uh, Simpsons t-shirt. Now, someone, Luke did sign up, but he only signed up at the $1 tier. I did say at the $4.50 tier. So if you are the next person to sign up, for the $4.50 tier or above, and you have to stay on for at least like one month, you have to give the $4.50, you can't just cancel it, you get the t-shirt. Whoever the next person to sign up at $4.50. So basically, basically, you get a free shirt, free shirt for $4.50. You give to the show and maybe stick around, listen to some of the bonus pods, they're all up there. Anyway, 
lots and lots of big stuff happening with the pod. It was a very big week for the pod. Um, first things first, though. Don't block the MDF stickers. I am starting to put them out in the wild. If you see a don't block the MDF sticker in the wild, and long-term listeners know the one rule of the show is don't block the MDF. If you see one in the wild, take a picture with it, take a selfie with it, and I send you out a free sticker that you then have to pay it forward and put the don't block the MDF sticker somewhere else. The first one is out there. I will say it is around... Kensington train station. This is like a, it's like a hidden Mickey's in Disney movies. You've got to look for hidden. Don't block the MDF stickers. It's well hidden, but it is there somewhere around Kensington station. If you were ever near there, do a little hunt, try and find the don't block the MDF sticker, take a selfie with it. I'll send you a free sticker. You have to pay it forward and put that sticker somewhere else. I want these stickers all over Melbourne. I'll be in Sydney at the end of this week. I'm going to put one somewhere in Sydney as well. So they are going to take over the world. Buy one if you want, radiomike.com.au slash merch. You can buy them there for $5. But if you see one in, in, in real life, take a photo. You get one for free. It's been a really busy week, as I've, <laughs> I think I've said that like four times now. Um, it's currently Sunday, uh, the 13th of Feb. I'm recording these on Sundays at the moment. I've been so busy, as I've said in the last few episodes, working full-time on The 100 with Andy Lee, which did premiere on Tuesday night uh, with some really good ratings. Episode two would have been out by the time this is out. And so stoked to see it come to fruition after I writing all the scripts and writing all the questions and putting it all together and then seeing it on TV cut up. Hilarious. Heaps of jokes. If you're in Australia, 9 p.m. Tuesdays, Channel 9, The 100 with Andy Lee. I've been working on it. It's amazing. And uh, you can catch up on 9 now. If you're not from Australia, I'm sure... There is a way you could either Jack Sparrow it. I'm sure you could Jack Sparrow it or you can just VPN it. Um, Find a way to watch it. It's actually a really relatable show. It's a light entertainment show. It's good for the end of the day. You just kind of zone out and watch it. I really like it. Finishing up production on the season at the end of this week. It's been an amazing ride, an amazing career step. And then straight up to Sydney for the Remembering Project, as I said. Um, So... Really busy week. Next week is a bit quieter. And then I think that's when I'm going to put go full speed ahead with Radio Mic stuff um, as much as I can. So thank you so much, everyone, for your support. Again, patreon.com slash Radio Mic if you want to support the show. And go and follow at TCB Pod. As always, we usually start the podcast with one of these bad boys. Now. Uh, 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 oh, Trivia question of the week. Oh. It is the trivia question of the week. We do this every single week. Trivia question of the week because I love trivia questions, particularly pop culture trivia. I want to start going like regularly to trivia nights. Um, But trivia question of the week last week, and you can call the show anytime, 1-800-438-353, 1-800-438-353. Leave a voicemail with your answer to the trivia question, but just call up for anything and leave a message. Really happy for that to happen. Um, The trivia question last week was a sports-related one. Which tennis player has won the most Grand Slams? The answer came in from Patrio Scooter, all the way in the UK. Thank you, Scooter. You got the correct answer. You get one point. This was the answer. Hey, Radio Mike, it's Radio Scooter. I have to talk really fast. I'm on 1%, but the trigger question was Rafael Nadal. See ya. Okay, thank you for that very um, rapid message. It It is Nadal. Well done. It is Rafael Nadal. Congratulations. You win the point this week. Quick one on trivia question of the week. This week, though, if you're on TikTok, you may know of a TikTok account called the TikTok 10, which is this guy, Miles, who does a quiz, 10, que- 10 quiz que- questions every week on TikTok. Um, it's a really fun little TikTok account that's really good. I play along with it every day. And I have never gotten 10 out of 10 trivia questions on the TikTok 10. If you play, let me know how you go. I love doing it. But... The other week, last week, for the first time, I got 10 out of 10 on the TikTok 10. I couldn't believe it. Like, sometimes I'm like, no, I get nine. And then the last one stumped me. This one, I knew every question and it was awesome. 
So I was really proud of that. I actually reached out to Miles on Instagram and now I'm talking to him about maybe doing a mic talks with me because he's got like 600,000 followers on TikTok. It's huge. It's a phenomenon. I love the TikTok 10. Um, Go and follow it. So in honor of me getting 10 out of 10, I thought this week's trivia question of the week, I'm going to do the last question of the round where I got 10 out of 10. And it's actually quite easy, this one. So here it is, courtesy of the TikTok 10. In the upcoming film, The Batman, who will play the titular superhero? I'll say it one more time. In the upcoming film, The Batman, who will play the titular superhero? Who is playing Batman in the new Batman movie is basically the question that I'm asking. Um, If you know the answer, 1-800-438-353, who is playing Batman in the next Batman film? Um, That is the answer that got me 10 out of 10 in the TikTok 10. So if you know send it in. Couple listener messages have come in. Um, Appreciate all of them. Hit me up, radio.mic on Instagram is a great way to get in touch. Radiomicpod at gmail.com, radiomic.com.au slash contact. There's a contact form there you can fill out. Uh, Patreo Ethan, one of our valued Patreon members, and I've decided I'm going to start saying Patreo uh, for all the Patreons so they can be identified on the pod so everyone knows that you are the higher tiered listener of the show. You're a Patreon. You mean more to me. No offense to the non-Patreons, but these guys are supporting the show week to week and I would love you to be a part of it. Patreo Ethan. He's, he sent me a message um, and he said, I've been working on an NFT project. Again, NFTs, I have no idea what they are or what they do, but cool, Ethan. The characters are all based on things I either do or enjoy. One of them is the podcaster, I've done up a draft of him and it's loosely modeled off yourself. I'd love it if you'd be happy to use it within the collection. So I'll put it on the screen now for video viewers, but Patreo Ethan has created an NFT and like he says it's loosely modeled. I think it looks exactly like me. It's awesome. He's basically drawn a picture of me and it's going to be an NFT. It's on the screen now if you're a video viewer over on the YouTube. Awesome. Completely happy for it to be part of the collection and honored I love it. I think it's really, really cool. So thank you so much, Ethan. That is awesome. A lot of people have approached me over the last like year or so asking if there should be a podcast NFT for this show. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they do. I don't understand them. If someone wants to do it for me, sure. But I don't want to do anything for it. Uh, Radio Owen. Welcome to the Radio family. Notice he's just Radio Owen, not Patreon. That's fine though. Love you, Owen. Thanks for getting in touch. Hey, Radio Mike, just wanted to say happy 25th birthday. Of course, three years ago now when I did a podcast episode on my 25th birthday, I told people, whenever you're listening to this, send me a message and say happy 25th birthday so I live immortally as a 25-year-old. I'm now 27 going on 28, so it is working. It's sometimes weird to know people are listening to the pod from the start because I've said so many times the first season of this show, I just cringe heaps. But anyway, thanks, Owen. He says... Recently started listening to the pod at work. Usually get three to four episodes in a day and I'm loving it. Awesome. Editor Mike's wedding was beautiful, (laughs) which is a blast from the past of this podcast. If you know, you know. Something that I've been meaning to send in is about when you mentioned Dankmas. I have no memory of mentioning that, but I do think I I probably would have. I don't remember it, which is crazy. Dankmas was the Simpsons electronic music creator. He also runs the YouTube channel Dank Pods and is a creator from South Australia. That's cool. He also does a drum stream. Thought he might be a cool guy to talk to on the show. Awesome. I must have talked about Dankmas at some point on the show, but I don't really remember that. There's been so many episodes now. Radio Jordan. This was in response to... In the, I, I put up a bonus episode recently of my next compilation from 3AW Radio that I've been doing. And in it, I mentioned that, you know, and I'll just say it here. A goal of mine is to try stand up. Just try an open mic. Just see how I go. Um, but there's some anxiety holding me back from doing it. I don't know what it is. I'm going to go see a therapist and try and work it out. But there's some anxiety stopping me from doing a lot of things. And I'm trying to work it all out. Radio Jordan sent me this great message. Mike, last year on the podcast, you spoke about the man in the arena. This inspired me because despite being an anxious person like you, I've managed to find myself doing for a living what I hate the most, 
speaking to large groups of people. I just heard you talking about Talk about holding yourself back from stand-up comedy. Get in the arena, Mike. If you fail, at least you'll fail while daring greatly. Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. This was awesome to read because the man in the arena was this um, short story that Hamish told me once when I went to get breakfast with him. And it basically the premise is, um, you know, think of like gladiators in Rome. Either you're the man in the arena fighting the fight, you're the gladiator in the arena fighting the fight, or you're a spectator shouting and screaming from the sidelines. And, you know, being the man in the arena is being a brave person and being in the arena while everyone else screams and shouts and criticizes and praises or does whatever to you. And that's being the man in the arena. So I definitely need to live by my own thing. Again, I'm working on it. So watch this space. And if you would like... If people think I'd be good at stand-up, let me know. Sometimes I think bits from this show could be good at uh, stand-up bits, but yeah, it's an anxiety thing more than anything else. Anyway, on to news and current affairs, though. Saw this hilarious video that's gone a bit viral this week. Um, it's, uh, it's, some, it's, it's quite funny, actually. Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, the guy in charge of this island, you know, oh, the guy in charge of this country, Scott Morrison... Very, very often highly criticised um, for many actions, including uh, before COVID. One of the most insane things he did was when the country was literally on fire. That's not an exaggeration. There was extreme bushfires, which do happen a lot, but they like pretty extreme bushfires ravaging communities and ruining people's lives. And uh, Scott Morrison took a holiday to Hawaii. Um, yeah, Scott Morrison took a holiday to Hawaii. It's gone down as one of the most, like, selfish things ever. Like, you're the leader of the country, mate. Stay in the country for the bushfires. Go to Hawaii in one of the quieter months. I don't know. Anyway, the election is coming up here in Australia. I don't usually talk politics and vote however you want. I I won't be voting for ScoMo in this election. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, it's not for me to tell you who to vote for. I won't be voting for him, though. He's now going on 60 Minutes, the current affairs show, to basically endear to the average Aussie. He's at home with his family doing an interview with 60 Minutes, which is insane, by the way. And in the promotional material for this 60 Minutes expose of Scott Morrison, where his wife is in, it's like, Scott Morrison's wife, Jenny, will help him win the election just by being a great, whatever it is. He's in the backyard of his house at like the the outside eating table with his wife and kids and Carl Stefanovic, the journalist who is doing this report. And a clip of him playing the ukulele has surfaced and he's playing, I, I don't even, what's the song called? Um, let me just Google it. It's called April Sun in Cuba by Dragon. You all know the song. Scott Morrison's learnt it on ukulele. He's doing a little performance for us. It's all going to be on TV. It's in the trailer for this 60 Minutes thing. Here is Scott Morrison playing April Sun in Cuba by Dragon, just outside, chilling on the ukulele. Take it away, Scotty. Take me to the April Sun in Cuba. Oh. so relatable that he can't remember the words. You know how you just can never remember words to songs? So relatable, Scott. Love you for that. What I... Okay, there's so... There's a, there's an irony on so many levels in this little stunt. The first thing is, if you watch the video of it, you can actually see how hard Scott Morrison, who, as a reminder, is the prime minister of this country. This guy is in charge of this country. You can see how hard this guy is thinking about not fucking up the song and how hard he's thinking of just getting the chords and singing at the same time. Like, you can tell it is mentally exerting him. You can tell it's like, it t- it's taking him so much thought just to do this. Take me to the April sun in Cuba. Oh. And it still sucks. It's still so bad. Like, If that is your musical talent, anyone out there, don't touch an instrument. We don't want you to play. You're not giving us a gift. His wife does come in 
in the chorus there to give the actual correct oh take a listen take me to the april sun in Cuba. Oh. now i like that she i feel like jenny morrison his wife sees how bad this is so she goes i have to at least come in and help him i have to try and salvage it which is why you hear her come in with the Oh, and it kind of does help just that bit. Now, the second irony to this, which I love, and it's been pointed out a bit, the song April Sun in Cuba is a song about leaving all your worries behind and going and sitting in the sun by the beach. The April Sun in Cuba, which is exactly what Scott Morrison did when Australia was on fire going to Hawaii. April Sun in Cuba, more like April Sun in Honolulu. Am I right, Scott Morrison? Seriously, like, the irony of this is beyond any point of irony that I think... Well, like, the only other irony in Australian politics so strong is the fact that Harold Holt died while swimming and then we named a swimming pool after him. That's pretty ironic, but I feel like this tops it. The only thing that I think in politics that could be more ironic would basically be if Donald Trump uh, took out a guitar with his family and started singing the song Blurred Lions by Robin Thicke. Can you imagine that? I know you want it. I know you want it. Maybe that's a bit of a distasteful joke, but I genuinely do think that is like the equaler, the equal irony of the situation. Scott Morrison, Morrison, bit of a nonce. And I don't think you playing that song on ukulele is going to save you. But you know what would have saved you? I think if you had taken out your ukulele and played this song... I would have loved it and I probably would have voted for you. That's a joke, guys. Hey guys, I'm just popping in to give a quick break from the podcast to talk about this week's sponsor, manscaped.com. Manscaped are the best in men's below the waist grooming. Guys, I'm going to ask you a question. Are your balls getting a bit hairy? Maybe over lockdown you just didn't shave your balls for a while and now your balls are really hairy. And now they're so hairy, actually, that you don't even want to shave them because you're worried about a razor getting all stuck up in all those pubes and all those, you know, curly ball hairs and et cetera, and you don't even want to use a razor because you're worried you're going to cut yourself and you're going to get ingrown hairs and everything like that. Here's an idea for you. Hey, why don't I recommend something for you? Manscapes Lawnmower 4.0, right? Reduces the risk of ingrown hairs, reduces the risk of cuts, does a great shave of your balls down there to clean it all up, tighten it all up, you know? Make yourself a bit more attractive and make your genitals a little bit more presentable to the opposite sex or the same sex or whoever you want to show your genitals to in a consensual way. Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 is the best way to do that. Use the code Radio Mike with no spaces for 20% off your next purchase at manscaped.com. They have some great stuff. I'm actually holding the Weed Whacker. What this does is for your nose and ears, ear hairs. You just pop it up your nose like this and turn it on, right? Get all those nose hairs out, you know? You don't want people looking up your nose and being like, oh my God, he's bloody Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy up there. Get all those hairs out of your nose. If you've got hairy ears, no shame. But if you want to clean them up and be a little bit more attractive, go for it with the Weed Whacker. 20% off, manscaped.com, code Radio Mike with no spaces as well as that. Hey guys, I'm heading to Sydney this week. How am I going to easily transport all of my toiletries in my backpack so they're not all scattered around. Oh, I don't know. Manscaped's tool shed, this great travel bag that fits all of your toiletries. You know, you can put anything in here. You can put your weed whacker, you can put your lawnmower 4.0, you can put your ball deodorant that they give you that make your balls feel nice and smell nice and your crop preserver on there as well. It all comes from Manscaped with 20% off at rate using code Radio Mike at the checkout. 20% off manscaped.com, Radio Mike at checkout. Put it all in here. Put your toothbrush, toothpaste in there as well. Any first aid stuff even. Great travel kit. Pick it all up at manscaped.com. 20% off. Guys, come on. Be more attractive. If you're going to be showing your genitals to a girl or a guy or someone you're going to be having some sexy time with, I guarantee you they are going to like it more if you have groomed yourself down there. No one likes, and I'm just, I'm going to say it bluntly, guys. No one wants to... S- I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. No one wants to do mouth stuff on a really hairy willy. Girls, you can use it too. I know it has Manscaped in the title, but it's perfectly fine with cleaning up your downstairs area as well. 
or buy one for your boyfriend or your friend or your dad or your brother for their birthday. Maybe not your dad. Kind of weird for, to get your dad a ball shaver for his birthday. But yeah, get it as a gift for a guy in your life or just get it for yourself. It works perfectly fine. 20% off manscaped.com code radio mic with no spaces. That is code radio mic. Let's get back to the podcast right now. Huge updates in the world of 20th Century Boy this week that I think a lot of you will really like. This absolutely blew my mind. Guys, I at the end of 2021, I kind of thought, hey, the Grilled Saga of 2021 was a fun little story arc on the show. But you know what? 2022, maybe we just refresh the show a bit, come up with a few new ideas, do a few new things, come up with some new stuff. What I've realized is that's a, that's a stupid idea and we, sh- we should keep doing the exact same ideas this year. No, but seriously, in the first episode of the year, I talked about how Brooke, the social media manager from Grilled, has quit her job. She's no longer working for Grilled Social Media. She's gone. She's career changed. I got to say, I kind of feel like I'm to blame for this. I think she kind of got sick of me bullying Grilled into sponsoring my podcast. Um, but you know what? I think, you know... It, that, you're in the game, Brooke. You're in the game. You got to play. No, but Brooke's been a good sport about all of it. Um, what's happened though is I, I was kind of willing to drop it, but then Pat edited together a TikTok slash reel of that interaction with Brooke. Me talking about, sorry, me talking about Brooke quitting. And it absolutely exploded on Instagram. First of all, Brooke saw it and shared it on her story. And she said, thanks, thanks so much, Radio Mike. It's been fun. Loved that. And in that actual TikTok slash reel, I say to people, guys, go and reach out to the other burger chains, Aporto, Schnitz, go to Grilled again, see if they'll renew it with the new social media person, any local burger chain. And you guys delivered. Radio Josh, thank you so much, Radio Josh. He's DM'd Aporto first. This is the first one I saw. He goes, hey, Aporto, have you considered a partnership with Radio Mike? He has lots of experience with sponsorship sponsorship deals and loves your food, I think. I do love Aporto. I actually love Aporto. My favorite meal to get at Aporto is a chicken wrapper with garlic and prego sauce, a small spicy bowlers, and sometimes, if I'm feeling it, a vanilla Coke. Whatever. Aporto replies. How huge is this? Aporto replies. Hola. Thanks for reaching out. We'll share this with the team and contact you should we require Mike's services. Wow. A Porto might be interested in sponsoring the show. It doesn't stop there. Radio Dave Lee Down Under, friend of the show. Radio Dave Lee Down Under says, Hello, Grilled. I understand you have a, uh, you have a new social media management team. Just reaching out in hope that you will continue your partnership with the incredible Radio Mike in 2022 and beyond. All the best. Grilled replies, we'll think about it over a burger. Wow. Grilled and a porto, both interesting, both interested, sorry. I then tag a porto and grilled in a story and a porto replies to me. Hola, Mike. Thanks for reaching out. We love some healthy competition. We'll share this with the team and contact you should we require your services. And at this point, I'm really thinking, wow, a grilled ra- a, an Aporto radio mic collaboration is forming and I love it. But just when we thought Brooke, the social media manager, couldn't help this show anymore and support this show anymore, her sharing the story, and this is, I'm not making this up, leads to an absolute spill of information. This isn't a joke from three separate insiders at the Grilled Marketing team. I'll say that again. Three different insiders from Grilled and the marketing team have reached out to me on their personal Instagram accounts. Now, I'm not going to say their names because I think they want to be anonymous, but the marketing team at Grilled loves me. That is not an exaggeration. They love me. This one's from Anonymous. Replied to my story first. Didn't know they followed me. We're all watching, Mike. Three burger emojis. 
She then says, we need a mic to take over on the grilled Instagram. You can be our new social media manager, even just for a day. Interesting. So she's suggesting that I take over the grilled Instagram for a day. I'll put the good word in with the team. It could bring the sponsorship to the next level. And here's the kicker that she said that really, really got me sold. I'm at Grilled, I'm marketing adjacent, and I'm personally invested. So she is personally invested in the podcast and me getting sponsored by Grilled again. From the Grilled official account, I get a message. This is the temporary social media manager. I would love to continue the partnership. However, it is not up to me. I will have a chat to the team though. Wink emoji. Stuff's happening, guys. Stuff is happening. Followed by the third insider. She reached out to me on her personal Instagram page and followed me. Do you know how hard it is to find a replacement for the queen that is Brooke? And I agree, Brooke is a phenomenal social media manager. She's done a fantastic job. I'm so sad to see her go. I am not Brooke's replacement, but I work adjacent to socials at Grilled. I unfortunately do not touch the social media accounts, but I can put in a good word for you once her replacement has been found and then says, it's so funny what you're doing. Our marketing team loves it. It's a thrill to watch it. Sign me up for another year, Grilled. Right here, right now. Sign me up. I'm calling it because a Porto, they're knocking on my door. And not just a Porto, but local burger chain, the Burger Block in Q. And because no one is sponsoring right now, no one is sponsoring me right now from from the burger industry. This is a totally non-sponsored thought. Burger Block in Q, the best burgers in Melbourne. Burger Block, there's a freebie for you if you want to sponsor me because... The Burger Block has reached out to me. Hi, Mike. This is, name, the manager of the Burger Block. What do you want us to sponsor? I said, my podcast. I am awaiting, awaiting a response. So that is where we are at. We currently have Grilled wanting to renew. We have a Porto interested and Burger Block local chain interested as well. I'm just going to sit and wait. It's a bidding war. You want Mike? Come and get him. Because, guys, I'm the most wanted man in Australia. I'm the most wanted man in Australia by burger chains. I'm the most wanted man in Australia just by burger chains. But not the big ones, not Macca's, KFC, Hungry Jack's or any of the other big ones, just the smaller ones such as Schnitz. A Porter, well, Schnitz hasn't said anything yet. But yeah, anyway, you get it. Most wanted man in Australia. Who would have thought? Who would have thought little old Mike would become the most wanted man in Australia? Couple updates uh, before we finish up. Well, there's still a fair bit before we finish up. Don't worry, guys. Um, I wanted to talk about Neighbours. Neighbours, the long-running soap opera, Australian soap opera on Channel 10, is finally coming to an end. It's been going for about 35 years, I think. Um, the main character, I think, is Toadie, Toadie Rebecca a man whose name is as stupid as the storylines on the show. And kind of sad, I was a fan of Neighbours for a while. Uh, I was a fan of Neighbours during the Stingray Timmons era. Scott Stingray Timmons was the best character on Neighbours by far. He was like the the rebellious uh, teen who had to turn his life around and he went to live with Susan for a while and he was Toadie's cousin. Back in about 2005, 2006, I was really invested in Neighbours. Used to watch with mum every night. One of the greatest storylines was the plane crash when Paul Robinson took everyone out on a joyride and the plane crashed. And Stingray's brother, Dylan Timmons, they thought he was dead, but he actually wasn't dead and he came to his own funeral. Bam! Insanity. Absolutely crazy. That was probably one of the best storylines. I absolutely loved that. But of course, as I as I grew up, the melodrama of Neighbours started to um, lose my interest a little bit. It's quite a silly show. It was, it, and essentially, it it was no longer profitable in Australia, but it was being sold to the UK, and the UK was buying it and funding it. So that's pretty much the only reason it was keeping on going. But now the UK has said 
no more. No more neighbors. We've we've had enough of neighbors. And uh and I don't blame them because you know neighbors is quite a melodramatic show and I think you know it's an old soap opera. It's got to end at some point. It is sad because it's such a big show with a big Australian legacy. Lots of big name actors and you know famous people came off it. Margot Robbie was Donna Freeman on Neighbours. Had a huge crush on her back then. Still do now. Hey, Margot, if you're watching. I assume you're not. Kylie Minogue was on Neighbours. Jason Donovan was on Neighbours. This is pre-me watching it. I'm pretty sure Margot Robbie is like the only one from the era that I watched that is now a superstar. But very cool nonetheless. You know who I think, a lot of people are upset about Neighbours ending. My mum is very upset. She loves Neighbours. She's very disappointing to, disappointed to hear that it's over. But there's one group of people that I think are going to be really happy that Neighbours is coming to an end, actually. And that's the characters that are in Neighbours. Because maybe they'll finally get some peace from the consistent murders affairs, explosions, stabbings, identical twins body swapping and pretending to be one when the other one's kidnapped and all these other horrific things that happen over on Ram Street, over on Ramsey Street in Erinsborough on Neighbours. Because Ramsey Street, which is actually a court, by the way, that's how they get you, is without a doubt the deadliest street in Australia. People die there all the time and... I can only imagine if you were going to like a house inspection there and you're like, so why'd the last tenants move out? Uh, well, three of them were murdered. One of them lost their memory and went to live on a farm. And the dad was having an, and the mum was having an affair with the doctor who lives next door, who has had an affair with like six different women who have lived in this house. And uh, they've gotten divorced and back together like 10 times. Oh, also, there's a guy across the road who owns a hotel and is basically like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons and he'll just totally sting anyone he doesn't like. So anyway, three bedrooms, two bathrooms, car park, it's pretty good value. Why would anyone want to live in Ramsey Street? But it is actually pretty sad that Neighbours is coming to an end. Like, um, But I, don't, I mean, it got moved off Channel 10 to Channel 11, their secondary channel. And I just think people just... No one was watching it in Australia except for people like my mum. And then obviously the same things happen in the UK. It's sad. Best of luck to all the Neighbours actors. I feel really sorry that uh, your show is ending. Um, that, that is really sad. But something that's not ending, something that's coming back, uh, and I did a video over on YouTube about this, so go and check that out in full with all my thoughts. But Futurama is coming back. Love Futurama. have talked about it on this show many times. It's had four seasons for four series finales over its lifetime because it's been cancelled four times and then brought back. Um, and now it's back again. Hulu has ordered 20 episodes minus John DiMaggio who plays Bender. Bender is an iconic voice and uh, people are going to boy, people are saying they're going to boycott the show. Um, so many amazing Bender moments that uh, I think it's going to be hard to recast him. I assume it's a negotiation kind of thing with money. It's going to be hard. All my thoughts in that YouTube video, go to the YouTube channel, check out my thoughts on Futurama coming back. But overall, I'm really excited because Futurama is such an incredible show with so many amazing moments. I want to talk about the three greatest moments in Futurama, in my opinion. Yes, it is a comedy, but it is also a show that expertly plays with your emotions all the time in an amazing way. Like it totally totally um, just completely can blow you out of the park with some incredibly emotional moments. The most recent of which was the episode Game of Tones in which, and if, if you don't know the story of Futurama, it's pretty easy. Fry, who lives in 1999, gets cryogenically frozen by accident and wakes up in the year 3000 and starts a new life a thousand years later. Um, in the episode Game of Tones, Fry uh, basically ends up uh, being able to speak to his mother back in the past for the f for the first time in the series, and they have quite a wholesome moment. Mom, there's so much I need to say. Is it really you? Yes, I've dreamed about you a lot since you disappeared. What did you want to tell me? And then they hug and cry. Beautiful, beautiful TV moment. It's so good at tugging on the heartstrings, and that's why I love it. 
But yeah, Fry, who, you know, always wondered what his family thought and whether they missed him. Um, and they did. And he didn't know that. But then he speaks to his mum and they hug and they both cry um, for the last time, essentially. Very heartfelt moment. Of course, then we have one of the most famous Futurama moments, Jurassic Bark, in which Fry, simil- they're all very similar in that they're family based. Fry finds his fossilized dog from the past and wants to revive him, but then comes to the conclusion at the end of the episode, this. I had Seymour till he was three. That's when I knew him and that's when I loved him. I'll never forget him, but he forgot me a long, long time ago. So that's the conclusion he comes to, um, which is quite a, you know, a humble and, and brave decision to make not to revive him in the future. Only for us to find out that Seymour the dog, in fact, did not forget Fry and waited for him outside the front of the pizza shop he worked for for the rest of his life after he went missing to a beautiful montage of the song, "If it, uh, I Will Wait For You. If It Takes Forever, I Will Wait For You. Beautiful, iconic moment. But the saddest and best Futurama moment of all time, in my opinion, is from the episode The Luck of the Fryrish, which essentially sees Fry believing that after he went to the future, his brother stole his identity and went on to achieve all of Fry's dreams with his identity. What he realises, though, is that's not what happened. This is actually what happened. Here lies Philip J. Fry, named for his uncle, to carry on his spirit. What happened was, after Fry disappeared, his older brother named his son after Fry, Philip, to uh, honour his memory, as you hear in that. I love Futurama. I'm so happy it's back. I hope they make a few episodes like this, but also just a few really funny, out there, zany episodes that poke fun of sci-fi. Full thoughts in that YouTube video, but I love the show very, very much, and I'm so glad to hear it's going to be back for a bit. I I don't know if they're going to do another five seasons, but one season of 20 episodes would be good. I really hope they they sort things out with John DiMaggio, but um, yeah, overall, really happy that it's back. Another quick one is that the Obi-Wan Kenobi show got a release date. It's coming out in late May, I think, which is awesome. Cannot wait for that. We'll definitely do some content around that because seeing Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor back together as Darth Vader and Obi-Wan is going to be awesome. And I cannot wait for that show. Last week, I also asked you guys um, to send in your favourite book your favourite movie based in a book. Lots of people wrote some in, so I'm just going to kind of spitball all of them now. Radio Danny. Hers is It, the movie, the Stephen King novel. Um, I, I've i seen the f- both the movies, It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2. I know there was another one from like the 80s or 70s. I haven't seen that, but I've never read the book. It's like a thousand page book. I don't know if I'll ever read it, but I do want to read it. And I loved It Chapter 1. I didn't love Chapter 2. I thought Chapter 2 was really boring. Radio Kasha. Also was Patreon Danny, sorry. Radio Kasha says Twilight. I have seen the first Twilight movie, but I've never read the book. And I thought the, the movie was pretty trash, to be honest. Um, Radio Susanna said The Goldfinch. Never heard of the book or the movie. Radio Ryan Beveridge. He said Life of Pi was good, but Lord of the Rings, no contest. Agree that the Lord of the Rings movie is a great book adaptation. Radio uh, Pav, Schindler's List. Radio Jess says Stand By Me, adapted from The Body. I've seen Stand By Me, but I didn't know that it was based on a book. But The Body makes sense because the whole point of that movie is four young boys find a dead body um, and it traumatises them. That's a really good coming of age movie. So I would be interested in reading the book, actually. Radio Jackson said June. The new June movie is surprisingly book accurate. Still want to see June. Would like to read the book as well. Radio Jacob Dalt said Life of Pi as well. Lots of love for Life of Pi. Radio Caro said Perks of Being a Wallflower because the book and the screenplay are both by the author, which I think is it would be good. I've seen the movie. I thought it was decent. There's that good scene at the end where they're in the tunnel and the, and it's Emma Watson and they're singing um, Heroes by Dave... Uh, yeah, by David Bowie. Yeah, that's a good moment. Radio Jonathan also said June. Radio Sir Dripping Sauce said Scott Pilgrim. 
No other film has adapted the style of a comic so perfectly. Haven't read the Scott Pilgrim comics, but I do really like that movie. And um, I get what you mean. Like, it does feel very, I don't know, it is very stylistic in how it's made. And I think you're right. It is really good. Radio Connoisseur says, Tomorrow When the War Began. Haven't read the book. Haven't seen the movie. Radio Gannonbort also says, the fir- uh, June, just finished, nearly finished the first June book. The movie does pretty well. Radio Lunatune said, Bridge to Terabithia. Radio Carly said, Lord of the Rings, The Dry, June, Jaws, Jurassic Park, and Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy. Radio Jordan Skies said, Goodfellas. And Radio Mitchell said, Playing fart sound effects over national radio, which is a completely irrelevant reference to the time I played a fart over a Toyota ad on Fox FM National Nights, um, which is a very silly, iconic mic moment. Okay, one more quick one around the Joe Rogan stuff, because I did talk about Joe Rogan at length on the episode, and it's it's uh, generated a bunch of debate. Patreon Luke, he had some interesting points, and I kind of agree with him on a lot of this. Joe Rogan isn't experiencing cancel culture. It's consequence culture. People don't like him providing a platform for dangerous medical misinformation or alt-right hate mongers and pseudoscience. For me... It feels like the kind of people that complain about so-and-so being cancelled are just annoyed that the person is experiencing consequences for their actions. Or people deciding they don't want to give this person our money anymore, which is just the free market. There's a place for differing opinions, and if everyone was the same, then that would be boring. But also, sometimes there is an objective right and wrong, and to entertain both under the auspices? I don't know. I've seen this word. Hang on. I just need to pronounce it. Auspice. Under the auspice of that being balanced is just silly in my opinion. And I I agree with a lot of that. But I kind of, like, I'm kind of mixed on it because J.K. Rowling's a good example of this. Like, I agree that if you disagree with J.K. Rowling, then you sh- you don't want to support her, then you don't want to buy her, like support any of her products. You don't want to give her your money, and I think that's your right. You don't you don't. Of course, you don't have to. You don't have to watch the movies. You don't have to buy the new books. But I also think, for me, like I will like I'll definitely be seeing the new Fantastic Beast movie, um, and I'll see pretty much any Harry Potter related canon that comes out. I will see, um, because. At the end of the day, I really like Harry Potter and I don't care what J.K. Rowling thinks. I just want to watch Harry Potter. I understand that she profits from me seeing that movie in some way, but I think it's it gets pretty hard to start, like, I don't know, because where do you draw the line from that? I made the point last week with Neil Young taking his music off Spotify and then sending people over to Amazon to listen to his music, which I thought was pretty stupid. And what I the point I'm making is that, like, as a con- as a consumer, you yeah, you have absolute right to spend your money wherever you want, and I think that's how you should protest, but I don't think you should make other people stop. Like, it, it interests me because are people listening to J- Joe Rogan's... People who obviously hate Joe Rogan are listening to his podcast every day trying to find bad things he's saying. Whereas I would just say, if you don't like him, just don't listen to him and don't support him. And then it is just a free market. If you like him, you'll listen to him. If you don't, you don't. You can't stop people listening to him. And another, like, right-wing company approached him and offered him $100 million to buy his podcast off Spotify. And they're saying, hey, we'll stand by you. We're not going to de-platform you. We'll stand by you. And, I, like, I think that would be a bad move from him. Because, yeah, I think this is really tough. And it's a really, like, there's a huge spectrum of opinions here. And I think that's fine. But for me, I just think, yeah, you like, if you don't like Joe Rogan, just don't listen to his podcast. And then you don't have to be responsible for the decisions that other people make. You, you, yeah, he's spreading misinformation, which is shit. But I also just think you, you're not responsible for any of that as an individual. I, I don't know. I probably misinform. I, I probably am, sh- could know more about this. I'm just thinking like, if I don't like something, I just don't listen to it. If I disagree with something, I just don't engage with it. And I'm like, okay, this person's an idiot and says stupid shit, so I'm not going to listen. And it's like you're 
uh, some people are trying to be like, no one should listen to Joe Rogan because of this, but clearly people want to listen to it. And I just don't think, I don't know. I don't know. I'll probably be canceled after this. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this episode. So let's finish with one of these. The plug. Harry Potter and the Boys continues with book two, Harry Potter and the Team Wizard Tournament, chapter three, Pooh Powder. Sammy Garlip joins me again. Great chapter. Um, here's a highlight in which Harry Potter has written a letter to the students, welcoming, welcoming, welcoming them back to the school and uh, explaining that he is no longer in the role of head of giving head, which he was in the first book. Here's, here's how it goes down. P.S. I am no longer head of giving head. <laughs> Which was his a other funny role. moment yeah. from the first book in which Harry Potter is head of giving head. Yes, Hogwarts. he's the headmaster and the head of giving head. Which we don't know if that's a magical term different to the muggle version of giving head. It could be something else well, there. we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> Professor Seamus Finnegan has taken over that role, sadly. I didn't have time to do it any longer. What's the spell he uses to explode his face in the... Um... Uh, eye of Rabbit Huff from Hum. Turn this water into cum. <laughs> <laughs> Go and check out Harry Potter and the Boys. It's such a fun podcast. I'm so glad it's back. It's been so much fun and Sammy has just been so funny on it. So please go and check that out if you haven't already. Um, Of course, the YouTube channel is there. Um, The podcasts go up as videos there. If you'd like to check it out as a video, just put it on in the background while you're making dinner or something. The video's up there. Um, Love making those. And uh, a bunch of videos go up every week. The most recent one, as I said, is that one about Futurama coming back. I've also done one that's Nearly got a thousand views about Encanto, the new Disney movie, being overrated. I also reviewed all of the new Pokemon designs from the newest Pokemon game. I talked about Harry Potter Return to Hogwarts, the 20th anniversary. So there's a bunch of stuff up there that is pop culture stuff, and they go up as MP3s over on the Lovable Nerd podcast feed, which I'd love for you to subscribe as well. Basically just trying to make my content as accessible for everyone wherever they want to listen to it or watch it. So go and subscribe to YouTube, patreon.com slash radio mic for any um, donations. $1 a month can go a really long way if you like this podcast. Or if you just want to make a one-off donation, patreon.com slash it's radio mic. Um, and that's basically it, I think, for this week in terms of plugs. Watch The 100 with Andy Lee. Um, that's pretty much it. My name's in Radio Mike. This podcast has been the inside of my mind. Don't block the MDF. I'm a very kind young man and some of your older staff could learn a lot from me. Um, don't lie to me because I'll see you. I'll see you in the Dream Factory tonight. Will Kennedy, finish your farm project. And I love you long time and short time as well. Catch you later, guys. See you next week. Woohoo! Love ya. Hello. I don't know why I ended with hello. Goodbye. (laughs) 